James Harden to Brooklyn. What? No music at the beginning? No preview? Yeah, what happened was I recorded a whole episode and I was waiting. Not going to post it. Not going to post it. So much could happen. And then guess what happened? The second I finished, I edited it. I was like, okay, I'm done. I'll just post it a little bit later. And then I was waiting. I posted it. And then James Harden was traded to Brooklyn. Something happened. Something crazy happened. And of course it happened the second I finished recording. I had a whole episode. It's my 20th episode. I'm really excited. I talked about James Harden. I talked about Kyrie Irving. Now you're just going to get my raw reaction to this crazy freaking trade in the NBA. I mean, I'm not even going to edit this. I'm just going to talk. So first, let me break down the trade for you. Here is the actual trade. Here's what Brooklyn's getting. They're getting James Harden. Done. Finished. They wanted James Harden, clearly. And I think Kyrie being such a crazy whatever he's doing now, and I'll talk about that later in the episode. You'll hear all that coming up. That obviously played into them being like, oh my God, we kind of needed an insurance policy for Kyrie Irving. Let's get another guy in here. Although I would take James Harden anyway. I mean, whatever. Houston is getting Kuruks, Dante Axum, and Victor Oladipo. They're also getting four first round picks, including one of them is from Milwaukee, three of them from Brooklyn, and four pick swaps from Brooklyn. And then the Cleveland Cavaliers are also involved in the trade. They're getting Jared Allen and Prince. I don't know how they're getting Jared Allen. They have so many centers. doesn't really make sense to me. And then Indianapolis is getting Karis LeVert. So again, I think Houston got a great deal. They're getting Oladipo, Axum, Kuruks, four first round picks, four pick swaps. And that goes all the way to the year 2027. The Nets gave up everything for James Harden. And why? Because the players get what they want in this league. There's two things that play into this. Obviously, James Harden and what he's been doing. Houston was desperate to get it done at this point. But also Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving sitting out and doing what he's been doing plays a huge role in this. And watch, Kyrie will be back in a minute. He's going to be, oh, I'm back. Welcome me back. Here I am, ready to play basketball. Never left excited and ready to go. Stephen A. Smith was talking this morning about how Kyrie should just retire. Like, we're so done with you, Kyrie. Yeah, not anymore. He's going to be there. They're going to be closing out games. And somehow they didn't give up Joe Harris and all this. I don't know how that happened, how any team let that happen, that they didn't give up Joe Harris and all this. Now, if you have, a, if you put a starting five together of Joe Harris and Kyrie, James Harden, Kevin Durant, and DeAndre Jordan, and this, that's just ridiculous. And there's other pieces on that team still. I mean, Jared Allen and Karis LeVert are real players. And I'm surprised that Houston elected to go for Exum and Oladipo over them. I guess Oladipo is more proven than Karis LeVert. But Karis LeVert's young. He could be great. Although he's not that young. I think he's like 28 or something. Still pretty young. But this is insane. This is an insane, insane trade. It's just so... Not, I, I'm lost for words. Again, I'm not editing this. I talked on this podcast about how much I hate this and these players need to be disciplined. And guess what? They just gave in to all of them. They gave in to Kyrie. They gave in to James Harden. All of it. They got what they wanted. Harden's out. He's going to be go partying in Brooklyn. It's championship or bust for the Nets. And I don't think they're winning a championship. It's going to be such a circus now. By the way, now there are no more pieces, and this is just a Knicks point. Playing the Knicks tonight, they're just going to not... I don't even think Kevin Durant is going to play. It's a second of a back-to-back for him. Why would he play the second game of a back-to-back anyway? He's only contractually obligated to play. That doesn't mean anything to them. Kyrie, we know, is not coming back. Harden's not going to be there yet. Now you don't have Levert or Allen or any of those guys. So, I don't know. So stupid, this league. I'm so done with it. This whole episode, I think it's a good episode. I'm talking basketball. I'm talking football. So many fun stuff in it. And this dropped. <laughs> I just un unuploaded the episode. That's literally what happened. So I could talk about this trade. And my father's like, oh, this is so much fun. Because I texted with him already. And he was like, oh, this is so much fun. This is great. We're going to get to see three guys who are desperate to win. Although Kevin Durant's not as desperate to win as the other two. Although. Is Kyrie desperate to win either? I don't know. 
it's really just James Harden. It's all about James Harden. James Harden hasn't won. He always gets what he wants. He complains. It's Houston's fault. I did I did everything I could. You did everything you could. They got Westbrook for you. They got CP3 for you. They got Dwight Howard for you. They got so many different pieces for you. It was never good enough for you. So now they got you out of there. And you think this is going to be good enough for James Harden all of a sudden? All of a sudden, he's going to be like, oh, I'm bought in. Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant. Who's taking shots at the end of games? Kevin Durant did last night. And that worked out for the Nets. But that's because Kyrie Irving wasn't there. So now I have a third guy. These three guys have three of the highest user usage in the league. Usage rating is how much they, I guess, have the ball per game or per the time they're on the floor. I think it's per game. They have, they're have they all over 29%, which there are only seven guys in the league who have that. And these are three of the seven guys. It's going to be a circus, like I said later in the episode. It's a circus. I'm glad we don't have the circus. Do I love James Harden? I think he's incredible talent. One of one? Yes. Is Kevin Durant one of the most remarkable players I've ever seen? Probably the second to best player in the league right now behind LeBron? Probably, yeah. Kyrie Irving, he's insanely talented also. Don't forget about him. He is one of the best players in the league, one of the best point guards when he is on, when he chooses to be on. But altogether, I don't know if it's going to work. If it works, it'll be the most beautiful thing to watch. It'll be incredible. It'll be a super team like no other super team we've seen. This is the best super team that has ever been assembled. This is the best big three that has ever been assembled. It's going to be so much fun if they figure it out, or even if they don't figure it out. Maybe they're just that talented that they can't be beat, even if they stink, even if they don't play any defense, even if they hate each other, even if there's drama, even if there's a circus. They just won't be able to be beat. But what happens? One of them gets hurt. One of them gets upset. One of them keeps eating burgers. I don't know. Right now, I'd be shocked if I weigh more than James Harden. Honestly. Just because you're traded, just because you got what you wanted, it doesn't mean everything is automatically fixed. It doesn't mean you're automatically happy. Maybe for in the short term, in the short term. Maybe right now, James Harden is happy. He's ecstatic. They have TMZ videos of him leaving Houston and he's all happy. Ooh, I get to leave Houston. Fun. Kyrie Irving. Oh, I'm going to come back and play. All of a sudden, I'm locked in. Yeah, I let my teammates down. But now, I'm newly committed. I have a new wind. I'm so happy. Kevin Durant has been the lone soldier in this one the whole time who's been like kind of normal and kind of just doing and saying the right things, being super mature. I don't know. Not used to that with Kevin Durant. Although Kevin Durant has always been like that. His only thing is he has fun, you know, on social media, talking crap, taking crap. I don't know. This is absolutely nuts. That's it. All right. There's going to be some music. I'm going to do a whole preview to an episode. And then there's going to be the episode. All that's coming up next. Uh, Yeah, crazy news. Here's the episode. When you're listening to it, keep in mind, it was before the Kyrie Irving uh, or James Harden traded, rather. So enjoy that coming up next. My 20th episode. Starting it off with a bang. Okay, one last thing. I'm not done with my rant yet. I thought I was done. I'm not done. Okay. First, Landry Shamit. That was the player. I kept forgetting his name. I don't know why, but he's a real player. And he wasn't in, he wasn't involved in this trade either. He wasn't traded either. So he's going to be coming off the bench. Uh, I'd actually say he's probably going to start. And Joe Harris is probably going to come off the bench. A little spark off the bench in Joe Harris. And Joe Harris is a really good player. So two players, Shamit and Harris, who both weren't traded. The other point I wanted to make is you think these guys who are so selfish and need everything to be perfectly their way. They have no resiliency. When things start to go bad, they're not going to be able to fight through it. They've always just changed or got something else when things haven't gone their way. So if there's a tough game, or the schedule's tough, or they have a down part of the season, or they're down in a playoff series, or down in a game, you think they're just going to rise up to the occasion and overcome all their struggles? What's to make you think they're going to do that? That's my last point to Brooklyn. Like I said, the talent could overcome all. But still, what's to make you think that when something goes wrong, they're not just going to jump ship? Like they've done their whole careers. All right, now here's the episode. 